Shalom, shalom, chavrim. I'm Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we are live today. And uh, listen, this is, uh, this is a very interesting broadcast. I'm sure it's going to be interesting for you guys as well. You know, my wife was telling me that in the comments on the interview that we did with uh, Marcus, uh, Dr. Marcus Papadopoulos there, that one person came in there and they had commented and they said, uh, well, you know, and I'm just paraphrasing. I don't want to quote them out of order, but, you know, God's going to judge Gaza according to Amos' prophecy, chapter 1. I think it's verse 7 to be more specific. And uh, so therefore it blowed the entire idea out of the water of Egypt, where I speak about uh, Isaiah 19 and, of course, according to one of the Hamas officials uh, that had spoken out before saying that half the Palestinians are Egyptians. And so my idea of uh, there being uh, a, a remnant living in Palestine, excuse me, not Palestine, but in Gaza of Palestinians, that they would not, they're not, there's no chance of that. There is a judgment coming. And for not one, but four transgressions, uh, they're going to be wiped off the face of the earth. I guess that makes Israel judge, exec, judge, jury, and executioner, correct? No. Here's what's interesting. Do you really know what Amos is writing about? I realize that many times we look at biblical prophecy, we think we know what it means, and we miss it altogether. So when I talked about Egypt, maybe some people, pardon me, I was a little bit irritated there. Um, some people would look at the prophecy and say, well, brother, you kind of took it out of context. You know, Egypt is Egypt. It has nothing to do with the Palestinians. They're just a bunch of evil people over there causing uh, turmoil. And as one person put it, they're just Muslims. You know what? The gospel of Jesus Christ has got to go to the entire world. And let me point something out about that. All right. I want to point this out. And then we're going to really get into Amos because I, I really, and listen, I'm not, I love you guys. I realize even those that are saying, you know, brother, you are just totally wrong. Can't believe you brought this guy on or whatever the case may be. Many, many of you are blessed. I do notice that. I really appreciate it. many people were blessed. Uh, and if you like what you're about to hear and you're not interested in just having your ears tickled, don't forget to thumbs up this video. And before those of you that want to thumbs down the video uh, because you're really thinking that Gaza should be wiped off the face of the earth and everything, you really might want to listen first because you would probably change your thumb position after you hear what you're about to hear. All right, first I want to start though with Matthew 24. I want to bring something to your attention that a lot of people are missing on, and then we're going to get into Amos, and Amos is going to shock you what Amos prophesied about, and it's not what you think it's about. That's what's more interesting. It's not what you think it's about. And I've watched all kinds of people doing commentaries on this, and every it seems like everybody misses it. I, th I think the Septuagint is probably, because the Septuagint was done in Greek, they're probably the closest ones, and they weren't, of course, writing a commentary. They're only translating in the Greek language what they read in the Hebrew language that was before what we have today. So, I think you're going to be very interested in what this judgment is all about and who it applies to. All right, now... People are probably saying right about now, oh, brother, you're going to have a hard time getting around that one. Let's look first what Jesus says. This is what's important because it applies also to Isaiah 19. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. In other words, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, okay? End was not yet. These are just part of it. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All right, right now we're seeing the earthquakes. We're seeing, we're not seeing the pestilence so much right now. We're seeing famines, yes. 
But a lot of this, by the way, has to do with the judgment of your two witnesses. But the kingdom against kingdom, that was also in Isaiah 19 because that's exactly what he says. And I will spur Egypt against Egypt, and they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city. And what? Memelachah, memelach, be memelach, be memelachah. Okay, kingdom against kingdom. Jesus was telling you right there from Isaiah 19 that it'd be kingdom against kingdom. Now, my suggestion was Morsi. What happened with Morsi uh, and, and the whole uh, issue of the U.S. back coup against him, it was brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor. Is this prophecy in our day? Maybe. All right, maybe. Now, let's look at, let's continue on though. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. And there is a lot of sorrow right now in the Middle East because after this whole overthrow of Egypt, 2013, of course, that's also the beginning of when the Syrian war happened as well. Now, Iraq had already happened, but then Syria and the sorrows and the, and the, the Syrian people treading on foot across Turkey into Europe and across all the way across Europe trying to get to England. These people were in exile like the children of Israel as it was also prophesied in Isaiah 17 that that was going to happen. Now Isaiah 17 speaks about Damascus being destroyed which is not totally destroyed but it has pretty much been taken away from being a city just in its own ruinous state that it sits now. Not totally though. Government is still there. There's still more to come, I do believe. And it's very sad to say because God puts it at the charge of Israel, which includes the modern state as well as the United States and the European Union for the demise of this country. Now, he said you forgot the God of your salvation in case somebody has forgotten this. All right, but watch what he says. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Well, if you're going to stand for the truth, they might as well just take you out because they hate you for telling the truth. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Because why? You're willing to really tell what Jesus says and not go tickle somebody's ears. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Wow. See that on a regular basis. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. That's definitely happening now. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Now, now watch here. Verse 14. This is after all these sorrows. After nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Then it says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto what? All the world. For a witness unto what? All nations. And then shall the end come. No, it wasn't Billy Graham. wasn't Oral Roberts. It wasn't uh, uh, Billy Sunday and all these other ministers that have been preaching the gospel and stuff like that because this minister, Billy Graham and Oral Roberts had two different doctrines altogether. It definitely ain't Kenneth Copeland either. And it certainly isn't the Vatican with Pope Francis. They're not, none of these guys are, are one mind and one heart and one accord. Well, Kenneth Copeland might say they're now one with the Vatican. That'd be a little different. So is John Hagee. But nonetheless, it's not this gospel of the kingdom being preached into all the world. It's just not it. I'm, I hate to tell you, friends, but it's not. That gospel there will be preached by the two witnesses to all the nations. Now, they're going to try to manufacture this which is what we see in Daniel 11, where it says the sons of the lawless of your people are the sons of the violent among your people, as uh, the Mamre translates the, the Hebrew word there, shall try to establish the vision or raise the vision up or marry the vision, trying to bring it to pass, but they shall fail. Why? Because God, the Bible says when, they, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard against him. Your two witnesses will be the standard against Rome's initiative and what they're trying to do here in the Middle East. Now, that brings us to this whole issue of Amos as well. So, we can see that after the nation rises against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes in diverse places, pestilence, all these things, the beginning of sorrows, 
and after the people begin to turn on each other because the love of many of us has, has waxed cold and nobody seems to care anymore and all the false prophets are out there spreading all their lies it's kind of interesting how God does that he just lets you go out there and do all your lies and get it all out of your system get it all done so you can look like a idiot after it's all said and done and then he sends the two witnesses on the scene to set the set the whole story straight the way it should be all right so all that happens and so we can see that the false prophets everything happens the the uh, the iniquity shall abound so the love of many will wax cold but he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved so there's going to be some that are going to endure no matter what and they're going to be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached See, that's even, that's going in the future yet from these events and all into all the world and all the world for a witness into all nations. Okay, now, so this brings us to the issue about Amos because here I am trying to tell people the truth, you know, and, and like this, like Dr. Marcus, I am dead set against Hamas, the terrorist organization inside of Gaza. Uh, I am against all of those that are trying to lob bombs over at the Israeli communities that want to wipe Israel off the face of the map, you know. But there's also a side of the Palestinian people there that are obviously Egyptian, as obviously will fulfill biblical prophecy along with those Egyptians that are living still in Egypt. Which, by the way, if you look at the prophecy, he includes the different areas that they're living in. He doesn't just say in Goshen or in the main heart of Egypt, but he literally shows you in the prophecy that they've been scattered all over the place. But there's going to be a remnant that are going to believe the gospel, and they're actually going to have a highway between them and Syria where they're going to be able to intermingle with one another. So something's coming that's going to allow the true believers to be able to, to fellowship with one another, including Israelis. What do you know? The Israelis are going to be believers as well at this time. Now, here's what's interesting. So we get into Amos. Is everybody, let me go see. You guys all sitting on the edge of your seat right about now? I hope you are. Uh, God bless you. Uh, our, our, our moderators always like to say that. There's such blessed people there. All right, so if you're sitting on the edge of your seat to know what is going on in Amos, let's look at it. I just love Amos. Thus, saith the Lord, and of course it's not L-O-R-D, it's yod heh vav amad Yahuwah al shlosha that's in the, uh, they call it the masculine, but it's really a feminine uh, gesture there. For three transgressions of Azah, Gaza, which also, by the way, happens to be the name of a goat. That's how we say Az is a goat, Azah would be uh, the feminine goat. Um, but we'll still use it as a country. All right, don't worry. I'm not going to change it for you and make everybody all freaked out and say, oh, no, you're going to try to say it's goats and this is what it's really applying to. No, it's, we're, it's, going to, it's applying to Gaza, okay? For three transgressions, yea, four, alba'a lo ashivinu. Okay, I will not return to you. I will not come back to you. For three transgressions, uh, four transgressions of Gaza, I'm, because of what you've done, you did four things. You upset God so bad what you did in Gaza that God is refusing to return to you. And watch what he says you did. Al Hagalotum Golot Shalomah. Now that's interesting. They don't even translate it here the right way. King James don't even translate it the right way. Neither one of them do. But if you go to the Septuagint, they did. I was very pleased with the Septuagint. The Septuagint did say what it actually says. They carried away, they put on their captive. A whole captivity. They call it a captivity. Solomon. You carried away, you carried like prisoners. Children of Solomon is what it's really talking about. All right, the disengagement of what, oh, wow, geez, what year was that? 2005, I believe it was, something like that, right? This is what you did. You carried them away as captives, as prisoners. Who? Salama, Sh uh, Shalama, Solomon's children. You carried them away captive to do what? Laha Seger. See, to close them in or to take them, like taking them up, deliver them to what? To La Adam, to, to, to Rome. 
Because Rome wanted you to do it, you took the very children of Solomon, the children of Israel, and you delivered them into the hands of the Romans so that you could get a two-state solution going. And so what does he say here? So I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, and it shall devour what the palaces thereof. And that's the correct word. Palaces is what it is. It's a citadel. I'm going to destroy the palaces thereof. Now, it doesn't say he's going to destroy Gaza. <laughs> I'm going to send a fire on the wall of Gaza. Let me show you something. This is from the Jewish library. This is Sharon's first describes a disengagement plan from 2003, 2004. Prime Minister Sharon letter to President Bush outlining disengagement plan as April 14th, 2004. Bush so excited about it. Well, he's one of the walls. He's one of the palaces, I should say. All right. Do you know? I mean, it is unbelievable the different ones that were involved in this. But here's where the clinch is, right here. This one right here. I don't know how well you guys can see it. Sharon's four-stage disengagement plan presented to the Knesset for four transgressions. I will not turn back. Because you took captive the captivity of Shalama, Solomon. Solomon's descendants were taken captive, basically for the sake of Edom, for the sake of Rome, because of what Rome wants. You know, there was a very interesting article here, very chamish, called Bye Bye Gaza. He actually wrote a book about this. I wish Barry was still alive. I would have had him on today. I would have had to have Barry in on this. In Barry Chalmers' Netherworld, he gave a speech in Jerusalem last winter. It became the source of a powerful articles and a dramatic CD-ROM. He insisted that Israeli government, led by Shimon Peres, Yossi Balin, had already promised East Jerusalem to the Vatican. He named the Vatican and the Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR, as Israel's prime enemies. He predicted that both parties wanted parts of Jerusalem in the Vatican's hand within a year. Israel was finished the moment its people conspired to destroy the lives of the Jews of Gaza. This author watched how the knives of Yisha were led from one trap to another by their local council. He raised Kafar Me'aman and Ofkaim in the days leading to the disposal of the Jews. He spoke to the significant audiences in the Neve Declim in Eli Sinai, but this message of resistance was too real for Gush Katif. Now he says, I have a new book called Bye Bye Gaza. In 10 chapters, it recounts the Battle of Gaza and the subsequent government tortures of the refugees. Each chapter begins with a striking photo of the living Gaza as a photograph by Gima Blek. You can purchase the book within color in the most or less dear black and white. All right, that's the book that Barry Chalmers had wrote. This is what he's talking about. Amos saw exactly what the leaders of Israel, United States, and Rome were going to do to the residents of Gaza. This is why it says they took them captive, handed them over to Edom. I haven't, I haven't done enough research on this as of yet to really do a really good job on this, but I will. Okay, such a good boy. And with such a, welcome back to my world my craziness coming true. Such a good boy. And with such a keen understanding of Catholic liturgy, of course, will make the CFR's executive Henry Kissinger a papal advisor and Henry Barely in his new leather advisory chair when Adhud Olimert decides to take a trip to meet uh, the Pope. Such threats you never heard if Israel doesn't surrender a nice chunk of Jerusalem and put Catholic troops outside of Gaza instead of the idea. Ooh, there it was. I didn't even know that was there. Ay, 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 ay. So it was the Catholic Church. They delivered them to Adam. Oh my gosh. 
So while Israel one step away from a final mortal blow, Olimer loses his cool and thoughtfully reminds the world that we have nukes. So where are the Jews of the world as Israel teeters on a nuclear holocaust? Why the biggest crooks like the vicious pro-Gaza removal squad of Stephen Cohen and Daniel Abraham are funding expenses charities to fuel the death march. Look at the CFR names on the board of Jews for justice. Holbrook, Tesh, Zuckerman, lots more inside. Every organization and personality representing the Gaza settlers was defeated snitch. The one hope for Gaza battle was a hotel complex where 2,000 protesters resided. My gosh. The last hope was crushed when game from Koch gave the government what it sought, a phony fight between Jews and Arabs over Gush Katif. Bye Bye Gaza describes a deep conspiracy against the Jews. The author has not settled enough to print the book. Get the book. You know what? Uh, maybe the proceeds will go to, to uh, uh, Barry's daughter. Uh, I certainly hope they do. I don't know how that works or anything. That, that's just incredible. I had no idea because I hadn't even read that. I, I saw it. I opened it. I knew if Barry was writing something in there, it had to be interesting. Uh, and, and of course, Edelhud Olimert, uh, Shimon Perez, uh, Ariel Sharon. And so when God talks about Gaza, friends, he's not talking about the Palestinians living there. You know, I mean, now God's not pleased with terrorism by no means. He's not pleased with Hamas lobbing rockets over into Israel, you know, but God's neither is God pleased with the Israeli government not allowing water, electricity, and things like that, the basic needs for life to these people to go there. As I said, you're not treating your neighbor as yourself. You're not keeping the biblical command. And then when you take and you look at the scripture right here, and you're trying to pin Gaza on the Palestinians living there, and then God actually prophesies and tells you what he's going to do, and then the disengagement was right there before our eyes. I wish God had revealed this to me back during the time of the disengagement. I wish Barry Chalmers had been alive where I could have told him about it. It was biblically prophesied, and yet nobody knew it. So God says for four transgressions, and he had a four-part withdrawal plan from Gaza. You know what, listen, you want to support the truth, support the broadcast we do here. We need your help in supporting this broadcast. If you want to support the lies, hey, by all means, go over there, listen to the lies. I'm sure they'll come up with some kind of new concocted thing now to say about me, because God said they would. Yeshua himself said they're going to do it. He said right there, uh, many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. You want to be deceived? By all means, go get deceived. You know, and listen, I realize as many of you that's watching right now, you want to know the truth, and I appreciate that. Please support the channel. I can't do it without you. You're, you make this ministry happen, and I do thank you for doing that. IsraeliNewsLive.org, or you can go to Patreon.com forward slash IsraeliNewsLive. Either way, you can help support the broadcast here. It says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Yeah, when you tell the truth, you definitely are hated by everybody. And, uh, and I'll tell you something, too. Even like Dr. Marcus, many people, he's, he was a brave man to come on Israeli News Live because most of the people that think similar to the way he does would not come here because of my rant on the Word of God, you know? But he was brave enough to do it. And I appreciate the fact that he took the time to say what he had to say. And I, I was not expecting him to stand for the Jewish people the way he did either. I did, had no idea that uh, he had studied about the, uh, the Holocaust and, and had met with Holocaust survivors and the, the, the passion and the conviction he had for these people here. But now you know what the truth is about this. Uh, you know, there's other articles out as well. I hear Perez wants to hand over Christian sites in Israel to the Vatican. Uh, this was on Haaretz of No, uh, no Doubt. <laughs> uh, article here back in, uh, when was this article here? This was in 2009. I'll just put it in the, uh, com in, in the description below for you guys so you'll have that. Uh, but Bye Bye Gaza, I'm going to have to order the book as well. I, di I didn't even know Barry wrote that particular book there. I should, maybe, I, maybe he said it when he was on our program um, the last time he was on the program because we were talking about the death of the three uh, Jewish boys, uh, I think from Hebron, uh, what happened to them. And there, Barry was also putting the blame square on the government. You want to talk about an Israeli 
that would expose what's going on in the government, Barry Chalmish was one of them. But if you want some puppet that's going to sit there and tell you the New World Order agenda, but never but sugarcoat it with something else, and oh yeah, they might pretend like they're you know they're not for the Vatican, but you know they're just sucked right up to the Vatican regardless. Oh jeez. Anyway, let's see what you guys are saying over here. Have I got everybody nervous now? I have no idea as the comments race to get to the bottom there. Oh, nope, that's not how you get it down there. So, anyway, uh, it's a blessing to me. And I want to tell you something. Uh, I was not anticipating uh, this to happen tonight. I really didn't. I just went, you know, after the comment was made, I decided to go and study uh, the book of Amos again and relook at the, the prophecies because I knew that they're there. I knew what Amos said about Gaza, but I had no idea until the Lord revealed it to me what this was all about. And so that fire on the wall of Gaza were all those leaders that betrayed their own people and handed them over like prisoners, you know, like captives. And, and, and you know, here's what's interesting. Let, let, me show, let me pull up a picture for you guys real quick. You know, that picture's worth a thousand words, right? Disengagement Gaza. Okay, I want you to see when they talk about these people going like prisoners, they, they were going like prisoners. You know? Here they are in the in their in their homes, not wanting to leave. You know, and I'm sure it was hard for the Israeli soldiers. But believe me, it's hard for them. They, they didn't want to have to do it. You know, they didn't want to have to deal with it. Here you go here, girl crying, pleading. You know, a mother pleading as she's being led away by, by Israeli military. You know, uh, this is when they actually finally took, I believe this is where uh, they take the, the scroll and they, and they go away. The, this one group here just went, on, went ahead and went away. A uh, lot, lot of this I'm aware of what was happening, stuff like that. You know, the whole military, here they are at their homes. And uh, you got to go. You got to go. This one here, he's been taken away forcibly, forcibly by the Israeli military. You know, taking them away captive. This is exactly what it said. And they were loaded up on buses. Um, I know that if you read the article, they talk about there, were, there, were, there was going to be money given to them as, as a result of leaving. Some of the articles that came out about this early on, though, did say that the banks would not forgive them their loans. They were forced to have to pay the loan back and yet go find a new house. Uh, here you go again. Gaza's a disengagement. Got the guy's arm all twisted up, taking him out, you know, taking him out prisoners. That's the way they were being treated. Barry talks about how that they were tortured as well. Uh, so we don't know the full extent. This girl here is in handcuffs. Got her in handcuffs, taking her out. U.S. Daily Major withdrawal from Gaza, uh, the resistance. Got that girl handcuffed, taking her out. And here are some of the ones that, are, that were responsible for it. So God is going to put a fire and destroy the palaces thereof. Um, I don't know how that would be in the sight of God. I'll kind of hold my peace on that. Um, I'm sure they would love for me to comment on that. So, but I'm not going to. Um, you know, but these were the type of things that were happening. All these people taken away. I'm Steve Benoon. Thank you for watching, friends. We do love you. I know it's very serious, the things that I share with you. It's not easy to hear some of the things that we talk about here. Uh, but we've got to, uh, we got to tell the truth here. Um, just looking real quick comments here just before I jump out of here. So, yeah, the Greater Israeli Project is what the Rothschild community is trying to do. They're trying to expand the borders, but it's not really for the people of Israel. This is for some demonic New World Order agenda that they're doing. And, you know, I'll tell you something, too, that Marcus said to me. 
before we before we actually went on air the other night. And I thought it was very interesting. He told me, he said, Steve, he says, listen, he said, I'm not against the Israeli people. He said, what I am against is the elites that run the governments of Israel, the United States, Great Britain, the European Union, and he said even Russia. There are elites that are out there running all of these world governments. But he said that's not the reflection of the people themselves that are there. And I was surprised that he actually worded it the way he did. And that's exactly what it is. Even the politicians are not the elite that are running the politicians. It's those multi, and he even told me these multi-billionaires, you know, like for example, in America, you're either a state-owned news agency or you are a, ran by some billionaire that controls the agenda of that news uh, print. So why do they make fun of Russia and say that RT is a state-ran uh, organization? It's no different than what we have in America. Whether it be the New York Times, Newsweek, CNN, Fox, it's whoever owns that media conglomerate, whichever elites that have the money that can control the narrative. That's why you see all these guys that go on there that... If they make a mistake, they're out there apologizing, saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Oh, I offended the president. Oh, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. I'll get fired if I don't change and make something right. Well, I'm probably gonna get fired anyway. Yeah, that's what it is. Ah, oh, geez. Sister Jennifer, I hope you feel better, sister. God bless you, and thank you for coming back. So glad to see you again. Anyway, shalom, shalom, guys. It is late, late here. Uh, I am gonna be crashing in for the evening, but uh, that was exciting. That was an exciting blessing. I trust it was exciting for you as well. Shalom and good evening.